got interest from several theaters and a couple of theater chains. Um, we've sent in a letter of inquiry to AMC Independent, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. Um, you know, I have been, if you followed me on Twitter already or if you go back and look through my feed, I've been a bit of a vocal critic of AMC because of the handling of the Hatchet 2 situation and uh, the recent I Spit on Your Grave, um, only getting a, a week's worth of shelf life in AMC's theaters. Um, didn't which, have enough owls in it. Yeah, I think that Not was it. Owls. Even, even though per theater it did better than the owls movie. Well, it didn't have them in it, though. Right. I mean, there's a, you got a grade on a handicap for owls. So if you're going to do a brutal rape revenge film, um, have an owl uh, be the rape victim. I think Chad Lindbergh raping an owl would be pretty, pretty interesting <laughs> I to see. I would pay to see that. Um, I would not pay to see that. I would really <laughs> would, not. Really it's would. actually up here right now, and I'm not digging it. <laughs> I, I would pay to see Chad Lindbergh right now. He would pay to watch me watch that. I would, yes. It's like the uh, two girls, one cub. One Chad Lindbergh, one owl <laughs> reaction. <laughs> oh, that can't be happening. And yet it is. <laughs> we are, we're, we're happy AMC, the AMC theater chain, or AMC independent, or whatever they call themselves, uh, is giving us the time of day. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, now, now, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they give us the time of day? What uh, separates us from, like, say, uh, aside from star power and money and marketing, from, say, the latest Jennifer Aniston piece of shit, where she's sort of bemused and doesn't really know what's going on until the third act? Well, I mean... And maybe then even... It's a horror film. It's a, you know, which uh, appeals to a rabidly loyal, but somewhat small audience um, and that can make some uh, theaters leery um, you'd be surprised at the amount of independent independent cinemas who uh, don't want to look at our screener because it's because they screen independent films and not horror films um, which to me is the word just independent just doesn't mean ridiculous. a damn thing anymore <laughs> no it's like, it's, I, I, it's, it's just I love me some cold. James Gunn but when a movie with Rain Wilson in it can be considered independent He's only on the biggest frickin' oh, sitcom. Oh, never mind Rain Wilson. I mean, look at the Which, I can't wait to see Super, by the way. No, I'm not no. bagging on Super. Not at but, all. But, but I'm I mean, just talking about, they're independent. We only had $30 million. <laughs> I lived on a double cheeseburger off the dollar menu at McDonald's a fucking day while we were watching Ray, or shooting Raymond did it. I was yeah, watching it. I just happened to have a camera in my hand, too. Right. Well, you know, and I mean, I know Gunn was working with... Uh, with a limited budget, but I yeah. mean, we had a we had a fraction of that limited budget. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> nothing is not technically a fraction, but yeah, yeah okay. no, we didn't was, have nothing. We had more than nothing, but yeah, not we're much. Uh, but you know we're we're a small budget film, and I think the they, they quality sub indie, don't they? I think so, micro budget. I think is the oh the, micro budget is the the yeah. PC term because sub indie. I mean, good lord, it's like okay, yeah, like, it just makes you sound in addition to not having any money or any friends or anybody gives a shit about you. Like maybe like your twenty first gene wasn't freaking disjointed right. or what? I was like, <laughs> I'm so... <laughs> you haven't quite evolved to being an actual indie film yet. <laughs> no, um, we've been we've just been really lucky, and especially like I think. If you watch the trailer for the film, you watch some of the scenes from the film, when you see the final version, hopefully in AMC and any other theater that will have us in February, you will not be able to guess how little money we wound up spending on this thing. Yeah. You know? Well, production value is just far beyond what we have any right to with the amount of money we, we spent. And, yeah. and I'm not, you know, that's thanks entirely to our cast and crew. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I'm not... And I'm, I, I'm not... With the exception of my one double cheeseburger a day I lived off of, it's, it's pretty easy to say, like, every dollar of the film showed up on screen. Pretty much, You know, yeah. I mean, right now we don't know because we haven't submitted to the MPAA, but we have strong suspicion we're probably not going to come out the gate with an R rating. Not without a fight, yeah. Not without a um, fight. And I intend to make that fight because I, you know, I don't want to come off hypocritical. I've been a very vocal supporter of Hatchet 2. Um, I, I have a blog, I, you know, I spit on your grave. I've been a very vocal supporter of that. I have uh, been doing some um, exclusive articles on horrornews.net and a lot of that's been kind of aimed at supporting unrated horror. Um, we made a conscious decision going into Raymond did it that we're going to aim for an R rating because I'm not Adam Green. 
okay? And our movie's not I Spit on Your Grave. Um, we're not in a position yet where it seems like picking that fight is a good idea. And I was watching the Hatchet 2 numbers, I was watching the I Spit on Your Grave numbers to see if we might be in a position where we could viably pick that fight. I don't believe right now we are. Yeah. Um, I don't believe that the industry is quite there yet because the numbers are showing that it's not. So if you want to change that, find whatever screen I Spit on Your Grave is showing at this week and go see it. You know, show the industry that there is a demand for unrated horror and maybe next time we won't have to fight the MPAA to get our hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm going to. I'm going to go to the map with them because yeah. I believe it deserves an R-rated. And, and we... We don't feel, and Lord knows what wackiness the MPAA may come up with, um, we don't feel our movie is like in the crazy, horrible, just, you know, X-rated territory by no. any stretch. We think it's barely in C-17 at this point, probably. Yeah. That's, that's our thought. Sure. I mean, and, and that's not to, I almost shouldn't. I should almost hold that card to our vest because it makes it sound edgier and like, we're like, oh my God, you won't believe what you're going to see. But it really, there are just a couple things that are really pretty stupid uh, that are probably going to uh, trigger a little bit of a response from the MPAA. And when I say that the things are stupid, I don't mean the scenes are. I mean how much they go into the darker gray is kind of stupid. The response level. Um, the weird things they're vague on, the weird things they're specific on are hilarious. Oh, it's it's amusing. You know, I like, wonder, they won't tell you shit up front, but then some other thing, like, up oh, four thrusts or something, you know, or whatever. I wonder how you know. much shit we'd get in if I just posted the advertising packet on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you should see it. It's 17 pages of what you can't show in a trailer. Um, yeah. But no, and, and the point being is, you know, an R rating is aimed at people who are 17 years old or above, okay? The only difference between R and NC-17 is, ostensibly, if we get an NC-17, you can't take your 14-year-old to go see the movie, whereas with an R film, you as a parent can make that choice. Which I'm, I guess I'm um, fine with, you know? I'm I'm not, as a parent, I'm not cool with any organization telling me what I can and can't do. I suppose that's true, yeah. Um, but the big thing of it is, though, is if you're 17 Fuck years old, there. you've seen a tit. Yeah. I hope so. You're going to see a tit, and Raymond did it. In fact, you're probably going to see two. Um, <laughs> they come as a package. They, they generally come generally. in a pair. Um, you know, you've seen blood and gore. You've probably seen blood and gore on, you know, broadcast television. Or not broadcast, but cable television. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I bet there's been a broadcast that's shown uh, Saving Private Ryan or something. Oh, instance. yes. See, because if it's honorable blood, then it's right. cool. Right. If we were Steven Spielberg, we wouldn't be having this conversation. It's not even about Steven Spielberg. It's about honorable blood. It's about, you yeah, know, it's the war, so it's okay. Not to know? be too spoilery, but somebody gets disemboweled in Saving Private Ryan, and somebody gets disemboweled and Raymond did it. And I have a funny feeling they're going to have a slightly different point of view about our disemboweling. Yeah. You know, but, you know, um, so, I mean, I guess the point being is that... Uh, we're going to do our level best to present the film that we made to, to the public, regardless of the MPAA. If you want to be able to see independent filmmakers, filmmakers like us, our whole budget for the film is small enough Okay, that, that, that what we're looking at paying for the MPAA rating is a tenth yeah. of our budget. I mean, ridiculous! it's insane. We could have put that money on the screen and not had to give it to an arbitrary organization. Or I could have had a McChicken in addition to my double cheeseburger and had a McGangbang. Eating a McGangbang every day. But I couldn't. Because of the, the MPA. fucking MPA, hey, man. So, if you want to see that situation go away, or at least be lessened in its impact, go see I Spit on Your Grave. Um, yeah, don't just support know. us. Support horror in general. Support independent film in general. Support unrated horror. Support... Be supported. And if there's an independent cinema in your... I'm going to get in a soapbox for two seconds here. If there's an independent cinema in your town that doesn't show horror films, just write a nicely worded, yeah, polite letter to their owner and explain to them. <laughs> Tim Sullivan is making movies with no money. Adam Green is making movies with no money. The horror community as a whole makes movies with no money. Okay? It's independent film just as independent as, you know, the latest, 
you know, movie with Napoleon Dynamite Kid in it. Um, you know, I ain't mean? doing independent shit anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Whoever's yeah. I, I, the latest Her, indie Peter, cinema, whatever the fuck that guy's name is, film that's got you know Bruce Willis doing a cameo in it. You know what I mean? I mean, come on, you yeah. know. These people are act, actors in independent cinema and horror cinema are getting paid a hundred bucks a day, all right. And it's no secret. Danielle Harris was just talking about it in an interview about Hatchet too. You know, chick's been in Hollywood her whole life and she's making a hundred bucks a day doing the kind of work she wants to do. Yeah. You know, if you support that kind of work, then make sure that the theater owners in your area know about it, especially the ones that are independent cinemas. Okay. You know, and if you don't like horror, then. Yeah, Why are you watching this? Right. <laughs> uh, uh, no, that, that's cool. I mean, not everybody likes every genre. You right. know, I I think uh, to be well rounded, there. I think almost everybody has like one horror film that should probably sneak in there, probably. But oh, for sure. But so, I mean, you know, I'm speaking to the horror fans. Don't don't let you know people who like low budget romantic comedies and think of that as being what independent cinema is. You know, or if don't it's, let them be bullies. Yeah. We're as a film as a film fan community. Yeah, because we're not just horror guys. You know, right? Far from it. I mean, if no. you look back at like our collective works, I mean, I've never done a horror film that hasn't had you attached. Right. And you've only done well. You did kept before this. Yeah, I've pretty done much. yeah two horror flicks. Yeah. You know, I've done a lot of horror writing, but I mean, as far as films, I've done technically more comedy. Yeah. Um, technically more romantic comedy. Yeah. Like, really, it's all been actually romance, not between two guys, but like. Romantic comedy aimed at a male audience. Right, everything it should have had Seth so, Rogen in it. Exactly. But you know, Seth um, got me. <laughs> I'm the very, 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 very poor man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But no, I mean, again, just you know, if you like independent horror, go out support the independent horror films that come out. Go out and you know, demand them. It would have been so cool if that truck would have went by right as you went like that. Oh, if you tune in, you watch us talk about the flick, or you have some curiosities, you send questions to. Uh, the email address, um, you know, that's all cool and well and good. Um, watch the trailer. You know, that's that's the one thing I ask. Right now. Watch the trailer, decide for yourself. It looks like a, a good flick. And if you like it, throw it on your Facebook, throw it on your Twitter. Tell somebody else that you liked it. Show them the link. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's the first street team challenge. Just get one other person, for me anyway, let's, let's both come up with one. Let's, let's not be our shtick here. Get one other person to join our Facebook. Once again, the URL will be provided down here somewhere, at, or just in the you know URLs on, on YouTube, yeah. YouTube space or something. We'll get you look it for it on Facebook. You'll find yeah, it Raymond too. did it. If you search that on Facebook, I don't think some anybody else has jumped our trademark yet. It'll yeah, come. Give it time. What's but your yeah. What's your challenge? What's your Give a specific challenge. Boy, Energize the troops, sir. That's That's rough. I would just say, um, you know, the social media thing is awesome. It's great. You know? Like us on Facebook, show, find our trailer, watch it. Um, but I would just say, find one person that you know face to face, one person that's in your town, and show them the trailer. Yeah, you know, um, because invite them into your home. It's great. It's awesome that we have. If we can get a widespread group of people from all across the country to be into the flick, that's cool. But we're also going to need. You know, we're not going to be doing a three hundred screen release, a five hundred screen release. Okay. 10,000 screens. We're not Avatar. Um, so we're going to need people in your town. If you want to see this movie in your town, you need to make sure that somebody else in your town wants to see it. You need to make sure that they make sure that somebody else in your town wants to see it. So physically, my challenge, my request, my uh, desire is for anyone who digs the trailer, show one person that's local to you who you think is going to enjoy it as well. Yeah, good one. Real good one. And yeah, just uh, check the website and um, let us know what you think. Thank you very much for tuning in. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, I guess that's about it. It was a it was a good first one, Travis Leg. Rock and roll. Didn't yeah, a little even, rambly, but I think entertaining. There, there was a little blood, and it was uncomfortable at first, but I think just keeping a gentle rhythm <laughs> made it go okay. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our man, it was nice to know that just before we started this, our our vodcast had its whole life ahead of it. It was young and sweet. Now, it's all well, deflowered. Our, our vodcast is now a slut.